We're taking the team to Saskatchewan on the Mark Cross Humboldt Strong Remembrance Tour. We're pretty much spanning the entire province over, uh, we leave tonight on a Wednesday night, fly home Monday morning, play three games in four days, uh, make school appearances, run some, some clinics. We're there to honour everyone involved, uh, but specifically the 16 who passed away in the, the accident of April 6th. Mark never got a chance to play in front of his home province in a York jersey, and I wanted to make sure that we took York to the people of, of Strasbourg, of Humboldt, of Saskatchewan, and had the opportunity to tell them, your homegrown boy made such an impact on us here, individually, as a program, as a university. Uh, so we want to share that. The second part is raise some funds for the Mark Cross Sports Memorial Fund that has been established in his honour in his hometown. So the games in Lumsden, in Humboldt, the proceeds are going towards that charity. To be part of a trip that kind of goes somewhere where there's been a tragedy and you have to put on a face and be there for people who, who knew people very closely who they lost. So it's something that I'm going to grow as a person. Uh, it's an experience that I've never had before and it's something that as a group when we come back that we'll be able to look back on for the rest of the year and really the rest of our time as a program and relish in something that we did that was greater than ourselves. Obviously the, the main main focus of our trip is to go, is to go and honour Mark and um, honour that team that went through that tragedy. Uh, so for us to go and pay our respects and um, yeah, just kind of ex experience what we can of, of what happened and obviously Everybody on our team is part of the hockey community and that's kind of um, the community that was hit hardest with, with this tragedy. It's very hard for us to prepare for, so it's something that we're going to have to really go moment by moment and make sure that, again, we give it our all and that we're there for each other through, throughout. This was an easy way to get three games against a terrific competition that we normally wouldn't see and do it when there's a bigger meaning behind it. What happened on April 6th, there'll never be a closure. Um, we miss Mark every day. Can we help people and celebrate what Mark meant to everyone? Yes, and I think that's, uh, for me, that's the most important part of this trip is to make sure that we celebrate who Mark was um, in the place that defined why Mark was that way um, and also do it in the, in the way that he no longer can and that's to strap on the blades, put a York jersey over our heads and uh, play the game that that he loved. I'm hoping that when I come back, I, I, do, I do feel a little better about everything um, because it has, been, it has been tough. If we can put some smiles on people's faces, because there's going to be tears, but if we can put some smiles on people's faces and, uh, and, ho and as I say, do it in the way that, that Mark would be proud of, that's, that's the most important thing for me. has been with the Lions for five seasons. Here comes York the other way. Campbell in front as they score and they take the lead. It's Mark Cross. Creating offense now, number 18 Cross. Cutting to the net, the 50 year. Every team he was ever part of, it was never about him. It was always about others. It's the same in our family. If somebody was troubled, Mark was there. We knew the kind of person he was. We were very proud of the person he was. Mark could and did talk to everybody, and he could relate to everybody. Right from the youngest of children 
to the oldest of adults. You always kind of look to him to see how he's acting in uh, uncomfortable situations or just you know, fun situations and everything, every aspect of life. He is a sculpture of what parents want their kids to grow up to be, is Mark Cross. He was just a great person and he made everybody around him better and he's just the best friend and just really includes everyone in everything that uh, he does and just kind of shows everyone the way. He wasn't our most skilled player, but he was, he was the guy who was doing all the stuff that nobody wanted to do. The hard work, the blocking shots, he was the first guy to be in the gym, the last guy out of the gym. He was just such a special, special individual. His, his, his behavior, the way he treated people, um, the selflessness, um, you know, he, he, he is now a part of uh, York University Athletics lore. He was extremely respectful. He was selfless. He did sacrifice. We preach a lot of the characteristics that he embodied. Character, respect, optimism, sacrifice, selflessness. That's what we hold our players uh, to as a standard in all aspects of life. He was incredibly proud of being a York Lion and all those things have rubbed off not only on our program but I think through Varsity Athletics as a whole. Everything we do is at the standard that Mark did it at, that Mark would want to see it done at. He had a, a summer job at Regina Beach and, and so he would come back and spend summers with us and uh, he was home for two weeks and one evening rather casually after supper he says oh by the way dad I, I got MVP for the team this year and my response was what? You've been home for two weeks and you're telling me this now? And yeah, well, no big deal, you know? And that's why, which is not surprising. That's just the way he was. He was very humble, very humble. Class. Brother. Selfless. Hero. Loving. A work ethic. The selflessness. Mark Cross did everything that ordinary people are supposed to do and he did it at an extraordinary level. I'm sure there are people that think, well, how, how can anybody be all that? But as remarkable as it may seem, he was. Mark Cross was our hero because he did those ordinary things every day without fail. We're very proud of, of who he became. We're actually going to do a presentation at a local school in Strasbourg where Mark attended growing up. Uh, we're going to present on five main character traits uh, and just kind of go over how Mark embodied them and how we're embodying them now in our culture. And some of our guys are also going to do some cool activities with the kids, some reading buddy stuff, so it should be pretty fun. Coach thought it was like a good idea, so I'm yeah. taking that out and putting that in. What are we going to do and what can you do? And then I just put like around it um, all like the other words, so, like respect, optimism, Right now I'm just going over a bit of a speech that I wrote up. Uh, me and my teammate Scott are taking care of the character and just talking about Mark's character and how he exemplified all those traits. And I think this little um, kind of presentation that we're doing here is a great job of just a teaching moment for everybody and really allows us to kind of talk to old teammates and learn about different stories that kind of show his character and show how he was respectful. And it's kind of been a fun experience kind of going through and talking to teammates and learning about different things that he did and, um, little stories so we can kind of pick up and learn about the person he was and then moving forward just try to kind of implement those things in our life. I have never had a player of mine be idolized the way Mark Cross was. He was so very proud of being from Saskatchewan and so incredibly proud to be from Strasbourg. Mark left this area and came to York and we wanted to come back and tell you how Mark had impacted our lives and how much he meant to us. As we explained to you how these 
Five characteristics can help you in life and how Mark embodied those while he was part of our program. He made the most of every single day, that he chose every single day to, to have good character and, and cherish his time um, at York and I know he would have done that in, in every aspect of his life. Character sets the foundation for culture and we were very lucky to have Mark kind of create this culture here at York that has continued even after he left the team. And it's important to stay true to yourself uh, be the person you want to be and not the person maybe others are trying to force you to be. What respect means to demonstrate with high regard or special attention to something or someone. He made everybody better. Just being a presence, just, ha just feeling his presence. As we can see here today, he's just made us all better. You can look at a situation, you get to decide whether you can look at it in a positive or a negative light. And so optimism is always looking at something through positives. To me, I was just absolutely respecting him because he took a step back and kind of sacrificed that offensive role to let these other players take on that role. Another sacrifice was his time. He always, he always made sure he had time for everybody, um, whether that be Molly, um, whether that be his family or any of us. He was the first person to always make sure that, that we, we felt welcome. And if we can all take a step back and put somebody else ahead of us at times, we can all accomplish a lot. I learned how to be a better leader and how to be a better role model, I guess, in the community and to others. I learned how to be a better person and set goals for yourself and other people that you want to make better. I think we just wanted, again, to leave the kids with the impression that Mark has left not only on the handful of us that knew him, but on our program overall and how we left it in a better place than he found it. I hope that we hit on some things that are very easy for the audience to put in place and to start living so that, you know, that ripple effect of us living the way Mark did now is going to multiply and, and get out there and more people are going to live that way as well. We practice in different colored lines and Mark was the center of the green line, his fifth year, which was my first year on staff. And even to this day, the green line is the line everybody wants to get on because that was Mark's line. Mark helped us set a standard at York, something that we hold our players accountable to these days. And Mark not only held everyone else accountable to that standard, he pulled everybody else up to that standard. Mark has a legacy now, and as far as I'm concerned, my wish and goal for everybody in this school is that you're on the green line. So if you're on the green line for Mark, really you're on the green line for yourself. His team athletes wanted to be on the green line because they respected and idolized Mark and that is because of his character rather than his talents and skills. And I guess green just for us, that, that represents the pinnacle of being a, a good, upstanding uh, human being. What I'm hoping that we work towards is those five traits that the CROSS acronym stand for. So character, respect, optimism, sacrifice and selflessness. And you know, I'm gonna be challenging our students to remember those traits. When Deb got up and said to everybody, all her students, I want you to strive to be on that green line, like that was, that really meant something to, to us. When our players said that, that everybody wants to be on the green line because that was Mark's line, like I just, I never really thought of it that way. And I think that um, that's just a testament to to the people that we have in our in our culture that that means so much to them because it represents Mark and everything he stood for and everything he, that he came from. We do things with a purpose. You arrive with a purpose. It means the world to honor Mark tonight and the whole trip itself. And it just speaks volumes of how Mark was and what he was like to York University. He was the term heart of a lion. Eliminate time and space, get after them, force them into mistakes. Just being here honoring the 29 people and especially Mark Cross. And we have the MC18 right on our shirt here. 
and we have it on our jerseys too. And we'll be honoring Mark this whole trip and all the people involved in the accident, 29 people. We're energetic all night, positive. Feels amazing. Even though it's just a warm up, it means the most to me. And being back on the ice in the game setting is going to be awesome. And I just want to make sure the guys are all pumped and ready to go as well. Okay. Yep. Be relentless. All six men on the ice, all 200 feet of the ice. We're just going wave after wave. So get out there, do your work, get off, let somebody else do it. Put a smile on your face, have a lot of fun tonight. Let's get warmed up and go for some ice. I think it's a very unique experience to even be able to lace up the skates and participate in warm ups because not many people are able to do that in the first place. And to still be a part of this team means the world. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Loving it out here, absolutely loving it. A little bit of a dream come true because I'm at that point, but I just can't play in a game yet. But at least I'm still on the ice and I'm with the guys, I'm having fun. Get out there, you're flying. Felt great, absolutely loving it. I'm leaking right now, but this is awesome. Good experience for sure. You will see 18 seconds set up on the clock. In breaking with tradition, we will not be observing a moment of silence to pay respect to those lost on April the 6th. Instead, put your hands together and cheer to let them know they will not be forgotten. Yeah, get in there, get in there. For them to bring it here to show me where Mark went to, and then what they did to him when he came back, the kind of person that they shaped him into, and what kind of a team that he shaped the team into for being Mark Cross is is huge and like this is this is major in the healing process like it's his legacy didn't end on April 6th it just it keeps going and like this and when you guys are in Humboldt and Saskatoon it's gonna touch touch a lot of people and help them continue to grow and continue to live with a new norm. A few laps just and a few mistakes ended up costing us the results, but at the same time, this trip at the end of the day is not about getting results. We want to get them, it's uplifting to get them, but uh, it's about the camaraderie, it's about getting the togetherness, it's about clicking on the ice more so than anything. I don't think we're going to stop on this trip. There's, uh, there's a lot going on and um, if it's something like this that we can do for, for a few young kids and um, it'll kind of make their, make their year or uh, something that they can look back on. And, have some good memories, I think it's, it's, it's the least that we can do. And this entire experience here in Lumsden uh, and Strasbourg today has just been phenomenal, really uplifting. We're making the trek to Humboldt today. It's going to be emotional. I would like to find a day that won't be on this trip. For us that knew Mark, I think yesterday um, probably would, would be at least tied, if not maybe surpassed that. But for the players that didn't, you know, I think they're going to have more of an emotional tie uh, today um, because we have a number of players, you know, on the bus that would have had friends that played with the Broncos last year and were involved in this accident. Some passed away, some survived. Um, and for Caleb in particular, we're now bringing a teammate home to Humboldt. We're going to go to the arena first. 
I know the Broncos were practicing this morning, so we wanted to get a chance to meet the coaches and the new members of the team. Thanks, man. You're looking good too. How are they? Good. Played in Humble for a season and a half, 15, 16, and a bit of 16, 17. It's a super nice, welcoming town. I mean, all the guys are good people. Like, for me, it was the first place I went that I didn't know anyone, like a single person on the team, and all the guys and all the people in town were super nice and welcoming, so it made it easy to settle into. I uh, came in last year not knowing what to expect. I've been to Humboldt multiple times just as a kid, but never really spent time in Humboldt and uh, they just opened up their arms and welcomed everybody in. And it was an unreal experience and I love this town. And I feel like I'm a part of the town and forever will be for sure. It was a tight knit community before the accident and it even became even more tight. I didn't know that was possible after. And that just shows how many good people live in Humboldt. It was my goal ever since I was a little kid. Nine years old, I wanted to play hockey while going to university. Mark Cross couldn't say enough good things about him. And that was the ultimate compliment and the clincher for us. I know when he was talking to me about going to York, uh, he was saying how amazing it would be and how I'd fit right into the culture. So now I'm here and I want to do it and also honor those 16. And then by wearing number 16 this year and hopefully for years to come, it means so much to me. And there's just something about that, that at least I have a piece of them with me every time I step on the ice. Yeah. And coming out back to Humboldt and finally skiing on the ice, there's gonna be lots of emotions for sure, and it'll be a great time. You look good. I like the jersey. So I uh, created a program called Dahlgren's Diabetes, and it's to bring awareness to type one diabetes and to help find a cure for it and also shine a light on the positive sides of it and how you can pursue your goals and dreams and passions with diabetes. Because many times throughout my life I've had coaches tell me that you're never gonna play hockey at a high level, you're never gonna do this, you're never gonna do that because of diabetes. And so I wanted to prove to them wrong and show children that they can pursue their dreams and passions and be a positive influence in their life. I wouldn't say I was surprised by the strength that they've shown. They were already strong, so it's um, yeah, just perfect to see. And I think the the way that Saskatchewan has kind of always been notorious for it was really has shown through, and it's been amazing. It's nice to see the kind of impact that he make, made. That it was a lasting impression, and that you know the the team that has some guys that knew him and some guys that didn't know him still thinking about him and talking about him and doing the things that he kind of instilled. It's, it's awesome to see and it makes me feel good about the fact that maybe I was part of that as well. Marilyn and I were actually on our way to the game in Nippon. We started going up Highway 35 and, and I could see from a distance uh, the lights flashing and a tremendous number of police vehicles there, a couple of ambulances. All of a sudden a bunch of emergency vehicles and ambulances went by and like lots, like at least eight or ten ambulances and fire trucks went by. I just remember leading it right up to the accident and I was looking at my phone listening to music and I have my head down and my earphones in and that was it. A few minutes later a lady came in and she said um, there's been a terrible accident and a semi T-boned a bus and right then I think we probably just went as white as ghosts and we knew. They had us held back somewhat and I, I said to Marilyn I said oh this is not good this is bad. Ironically I did not connect the dots. My first thought was that I was impatient that we would have to go on a detour. And so they were sending us back to Tisdale and then around by Carrot River. 
uh, and then to Nipawin. And uh, we got about uh, halfway to Carrot River and uh, Marilyn's youngest brother, Jeff, called us and said that the Broncos had been in, a, in an accident. And of course, right away we, we knew that that would be the one. We also knew that that was bad. So we pulled in the ditch and a first responder said, do you know anybody on the bus? And we said, our son's on the bus. And so we stood for about 25 minutes and we were about 10 feet away from everything going on and we just watched. We for sure thought we lost our son. Trying to find Mark was, I don't know how to describe it. It just seemed like every, every turn we, we took, we got blocked. Nothing fell into place. At one point, we even, before we got to the hospital in Nippon, we even received a call um, from uh, the chaplain of the Trojans who told us that Mark was alive and well in the Nippon hospital waiting room. And so we're trying to get there and we get there and I run right in. And of course, wh who it was was Chris Beaudry, the other assistant coach who was not on the bus. Uh, so we're still trying frantically to find where Mark was. And, um, and then you do the process of elimination. He's not in Nip One Hospital. He's not in Tisdale. He's not in Melfort. I said to Marilyn, I said, he's in one of two places now. He's either fighting for his life in Saskatoon because they've taken him there, or he's still out there. And if he's still out there, that's, that's not good. And at that point, they, they told us to go over to the Apostolic Church in Nipawin, that there were other Bronco family members there. And they called us into a, a little room. And um, of course, we're hearing like two, maybe three fatalities. And I feel so sorry for the RCMP gentlemen. There were four of them, a uh, young lady and three gentlemen. And the officer that delivered the news was a great big fellow with tears in his eyes. And he apologized and said, we've never encountered something like this. And at that point, he says, we have 14 casualties at the moment. And it's at that point where you realize that you can't account for him anywhere else, that that's where he has to be. It's a road that we wouldn't wish upon anyone, anyone at all. But I remember waking up wondering why I was in the hospital and if our team won the game. Because I thought I got injured in the hockey game. It was about four and a half hours. We went to the church and we were there with the other families and we were waiting for word. And I think we were actually almost one of the first ones at the church to get word that uh, Caleb was alive. I sustained a fractured skull and a puncture wound, a third degree brain injury, two broken vertebrae in my neck, three others compressed in my neck and then four broken vertebrae in my back as well. I lost 16 family members and I do consider them family. The worst day of my life and the best day of my life in four and a half hours. I want to continue being positive and seeing the brightness and everything. And yes, there's gonna be hard days, but at least I'm here to experience those hard days, right? So there's always something to be positive about and you always have to look at the positive side.
There were a lot of us who really felt we needed to be there. Um, and you can't explain why. You just, you can't. It's just something that you feel inside of you that you need to do. And certainly there are players on the team that didn't know Mark, but they can see how this has impacted those of us that knew Mark. And they know that he was someone special. It's a defining moment of the trip. Um, and you wonder, is it the right thing to have done? Um, we wanted to go, personally I wanted to go, and the group decided, you know, we, we allowed the team to make that choice. And they decided they wanted to go, and they wanted to go together. I think it was really important for the, for the players to be there to grieve, to be with each other and support each other, because that, you, can't, you cannot replicate that in any way, shape or form. And I think it was a really uh, critical moment in the healing process for a lot of us. When you visit that site, it's, uh, it's a really emotional experience. It makes you look at life a lot differently. Um, it makes you appreciate the little things, the good things, the bad things. And I think it makes us, it, it, was, it, it was tough on us mentally, but I think it makes us stronger as, as people. To say that it helped, I don't know if it did, but it was something we had to do and we all wanted to do it. We were there together, but I think a lot of us, that was an individual moment because everybody processed that very differently. Take a couple strides. One. We're in Lumsden, Saskatchewan, uh, putting on a skills clinic for, for the community youth. Compete drill, uh, some passing, skating, some edge work here. We were kind of uh, doing all, all ages and uh, all different skill levels from shooting to stick handling, uh, skating, kind of uh, incorporating everything today. Always look up to, to our players. It's great to be able to get on the ice, and have a little fun with them, and then give back. When we're that age, and you know, you always like have role models and stuff, and it's nice to come here and give back. You know, we're on a trip remembering Mark and honoring Mark, and it's very nice, and uh, it makes you feel really good. I never met Mark Cross, but uh, getting to play with his team was pretty cool. Nice atmosphere out there. I thought it was really cool to practice with the Lions Club. They taught us points on shooting and edging, edge work, mostly everything you do in the game. Went really well, uh, just to uh, see the smiles on those kids' faces was priceless and uh, yeah, just a lot of fun to uh, get back to the community and help out the way you, any way you can. You want to consider yourself a true Canadian University hockey player and program, you have to play in Rutherford at some point in time. And I'm not aware of York ever playing here uh, previously. It might have happened, but certainly in my time uh, in the league as a player and a coach, we hadn't. So this is uh, it's quite an honor to be the last men's uh, varsity hockey game in such a storied facility. Here we go, Red. Here we go, Red. Here we go, Red. Come on, boys. Come out here. Heritage building like this is something that you can't replicate. This building, built in 29, has seen the, the bulk of the years of hockey, uh, university hockey, uh, being played in, in this facility. We call it the doghouse. The ice surface is a little bit smaller than uh, NHL size. Um, the fans are right on you. The, uh, the wall in the uh, west end is, is right up against the rink, so there's a, a sense of everything is happening faster and in a smaller space. I think there's sadness here in the sense that we're leaving this, this old barn. Its time has come and it's time to move on. The message is, I guess, um, soak in the environment, enjoy it, see a part of small town Saskatchewan on our biggest university campus in the province. Um, the people will be, I think, very supportive of the game and I think they'll enjoy it. It'll be an experience that I hope they will stay with them for years. So to close it out, that's, that's a pretty cool uh, way to finish off um, what's been an emotional uh, journey for us here this week.
every time we're out here we get to honor Mark, try and play and embody everything that he did and it's just been extremely special. It's heartwarming to see this group do everything they did um, on behalf of Mark and on behalf of 15 others that, that died on April 6th. I'm not sure that I could be more proud of, of those guys. They've exceeded pretty much everything that I've asked them to do um, and they've done it willingly. It's going to give me some closure on everything that's happened. I get to experience, you know, something special and try and give back and honor, you know, everybody that's, everybody that's passed away and it's just really tough that, you know, I like, because I didn't know people and it just, so I get a lot out of this and I get a, get a lot of good things out of this. This is important to me to, to come out here um, to show respect to his, his parents and uh, Molly, um, his, uh, his girlfriend. So I think that's, for me, it's just to show respect that to those people. I was pretty close with Mark. I played three seasons with him and then I was lucky enough to actually coach him in my first season as a coach. So just, uh, just seeing what we were able to, to do for them and uh, even for me personally, it was very nice to get out here and, and to pay respect and help raise some funds for his foundation. To see all of those crosses and all of the mementos and touching tributes to all of those people, it's, I guess it helped a little bit on, on closure with Mark maybe for me because it's one connection, really strong connection, but I really did ache for the people of Humboldt and the broader sorrow and grief that they're going through. Yeah, we can live and be like Mark Cross. We can continue to tell his story because that's the one story we can tell of the 16 stories that need to be told as a result of what happened on April 6th. Being able to come out here and have any piece of whether it be helping his family have closure and heal to the communities that we visited and, and, and making them understand how important somebody from their community you know, has been and, and will continue to be and, and again keeping his memory alive is so crucial for us. It has been really emotional and really healing for us to come back to be with Mark's family to spend time, to see them and to tell them again how important he was to us and just how much we want to work hard at really making sure that we honour his memory in the most appropriate way we can.